Okay, we will call to order the uh, regular meeting of the Batavia City Council for Tuesday, January 20th, 2015. I'd ask that you all please rise for a brief invocation to be followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Tonight, as the uh, City Council meets in a regular session, we just ask for blessings of guidance and understanding and vision as we deal with the business before the City Council tonight. We are ever mindful that uh, tonight we are honored to uh, are going to officially appoint several uh, highly talented men and women to our Batavia Police and Fire Departments, and we just ask that their careers of commitment and dedication be uh, ones of uh, very safe and successful uh, journeys, and that a blessing of uh, goodwill and safety be showered on each and every one of them as they act on the behalf of the citizens of Batavia during emergency situations and otherwise. Tonight, as always, we want to remember those from our community and from those from throughout the United States of America who are serving on foreign soil in defense of the liberties of the United States of America. And we just ask that a special blessing be showered on each and every one of those men and women as they go about their vital mission of defending and honoring our liberty. Uh, tonight, we just ask for a direction of uh, guidance as we seek to enact the issues before us and that uh, our willingness to uh, do the things we are doing is only done so because of our desires to make Batavia a better and kinder and more appropriate city for each and every one of us to live and to raise our families in. We ask for all these blessings. Amen. Amen. Alderman Chancellor, would you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Ask the city clerk to please call the roll. And before I call the roll, do we have Alderman Fisher on the line or no? Do we know? Yes, we do. Oh, good. All right. Well, remember, not until we make a motion to let you join. So, Brown? Here. Clark? Here. ATAC? Here. Star? Here. Chanzit? Here. Alderman Wolf is absent. Alderman Fisher is absent. O'Brien? Here. Callahan? Here. Coleman? Here. Sam? Here. Cerrone? Here. McFadden? Here. Let the record reflect that, uh, what is it, 11 of the 14 aldermen are present in the county. 13, 13 aldermen currently, is it not? Uh, excuse me, the 13 aldermen currently on the city council are present in the county for us. We do have the necessary quorum to conduct business. Uh, at this time, I would entertain a motion to allow for Alderman uh, Fisher to attend the meeting via the telephone. So moved. Second. Second. Motion by Alderman Chanzit, second by Alderman... Holman, that uh, Alderman Fisher be allowed to uh, attend by telephone. Court call the roll. Chanzit? Aye. O'Brien? Aye. Callahan? Aye. Holman? Aye. Sam? Aye. Cerrone? Aye. McFadden? Aye. Brown? Aye. Clark? Aye. ATAC? Aye. Start? Aye. Motion's approved. Uh, 12 yes, no 11. no's, 2 absent. 11 yes. 11 yes. 2 no. absent. 2 absent. Okay, Alderman Fisher, you're now part of the official proceedings. So now we have 12 present. Okay, now we have 12 aldermen present. Okay, moving then to item number four, which are items to be removed, added, or changed on the agenda. Alderman Stark, do you have anything this evening? Um, I uh, have been told we do not need an executive session unless someone would like the executive session to remain in place. If anyone has anything that they'd like to discuss tonight after an executive session. No? Okay, then we'll be removing the executive session. I move that we... Um, I'm sorry, I, I stopped. I was reading ahead. We approve the agenda as amended. Thank you, Lisa. So moved. Second. Move by Alderman Stark, second by Alderman Chancet, that we approve the agenda as amended. Any discussion? Her call the roll. Stark? Aye. Chancet? Aye. Fisher? Aye. O'Brien? Aye. Callahan? Aye. Homan? Aye. Sam? Aye. Cerrone? Aye. McFadden? Aye. Brown? Aye. Clark? Aye. ATAC? Aye. Motion to approve the agenda is approved. 12 yes, no no's, one absent. Okay, moving then to item number five, which is presentation of the consent agenda. Alderman Stark, would you present this, please? Yes. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, the consent agenda reads as follows. 
We accept and place on file the Committee of the Whole Minutes for November 6, 18th, 25th, and December 2nd, 2014, the December 2013 Building Report, the Historic Preservation Commission Minutes for October 27th, 2014, the Community Development Department Quarterly Report, the Moody's and Fitch Bond Ratings Report, and the following approvals, the January 2nd, 2015 payroll in the amount of $747,966.86 and the January 16th, 2015 payroll in the amount of $794,355.65. The accounts payable check re register in the amount of $5,549,739.93. The City Council minutes for December 15th, 2014. Resolution 1501-R, accepting a plan of dedication for Hamlet Street, Diana and James Forbes, 704 Lake Street. Resolution 1502-R, Resolution 15-02-R, accepting a plan of dedication for Hamlet Street, Steve Cohen, 707 Lake Street. Resolution 1503-R, Resolution 1503-R, which is accepting a plan of dedication for Hamlet Street, 803 Hamlet Street. Resolution 1504R, authorizing application for Kane County 2015 Community Development Block Grant, East Wilson Sidewalk. Resolution 1505R, authorizing execution of the local agency agreement for federal participation for safe routes to school crosswalk improvements, including flashing beacons at three locations. Ordinance 1501, amending the Batavia Municipal Code regarding certain city officers. Approval of Fox Valley Industrial Park Phase 2, final acceptance of roadway and storm sewer. Approval Class F liquor license and waive fee for the Batavia Chamber of Commerce Inspired 2015 Annual Award Celebration. Resolution 1506R declaring surplus property. Approval Class F liquor license for Montessori Academy at Water Street Studios. And that's it. I move that we approve the consent agenda as read. Second. Move by Alderman Stark, second uh, Alderman McFadden for the approval of the consent agenda as read. Any discussion? Alderman uh, Chancellor? I, I don't remember the um, the liquor license for the Montessori Academy at the meeting on the 13th. I looked, I didn't see it on, on the agenda. Am I mistaken? No, uh, the liquor license, the liquor code allows temporary uh, licenses for not for profits to go directly to City Council. Gotcha. Thank you. Any other questions? Clerk, call the roll on the consent agenda. Stark? Aye. Jansett? Aye. Fisher? Aye. O'Brien? Aye. Callahan? Aye. Coleman? Aye. Sam? Aye. Cerrone? Aye. McFadden? Aye. Brown? Aye. Clark? Aye. ATAC? Aye. Consent agenda is approved. 12 yes, no no's, one absent, or one vacant. Okay, moving to item number six, which are matters from the public for items not on the agenda. Does anybody wish to address us? Could you come forward and give us your name and address for the court, please? Sylvia Keppel, 1420 Becker Avenue, in Batavia. Um, this is a continuation from your account meeting. I wanted to make comments at that point when you were discussing the Houston Street redevelopment or the streetscaping there. Um, there was a, Alderman uh, Brown had talked about the revisions by the new council. There is a reason why a new council was voted in. And one of those reasons, well, there are several reasons. One of the reasons was River Street. There are a lot of people that are not, were not happy with the River Street, what came of that, all the money spent on that, and the outcome. And so that's one of the reasons why a new council was voted in, in response to that. So to take a design from the same designer of River Street and to say that this was great and you don't like that the new council changed things, that's, it's sour grapes. You're, it's just you're not happy with what the people have decided. Uh, so the plan that was approved by the city council, the new council, was very appropriate. It was very reasonable. You took out the curbs that could have been dangerous to young, young children on bicycles on the bike path. You, um, you, the sidewalk to, the, to 31 was fine. Um, it, more trees are always welcome. But now what you've done is this new design is very... I don't know where it came from with the psychedelic blue swirls um, and just all of that. The islands that are, are obstacles to people walking and pushing strollers. And I know you want to slow down bicycles, but are, is putting them in the street really a more safe option? Because you talked, you admitted that you're going to put the serious bikers in the street. And so if, the, if they start going behind the diagonally parked cars, if cars pulling out, how are they going to see the bicyclists going behind them? 
not a smart thing. You really need to reconsider that. The design, the original design, you have a bike path there now. Are there accidents occurring? Is that a big concern right now? I don't know, maybe you could give me, enlighten me to some of the figures there. But you've got bikes going there now. Why is that a problem? Why do you want to put obstacles in people's way? Um, let's see, there's the cost, you already brought up the cost of maintaining the islands and pushing it off on the park district to make them to have the added cost of maintaining whatever you have, whatever features you have in the middle, is not acceptable because the cost still falls on the taxpayers. Whether it's the, the cost is absorbed by the city council or the park district, it's still coming out of our pockets. So that's something you need to consider. And then your decisions in the past, you found out too late that it's going to cost you more money to shovel around all the features on River Street, so that added cost for you guys. And you also had to get a new snow plow, um, the, the shovel for it, to deal with the brick. Those are all added costs. What's it going to do if you put epoxy on the ground? What kind of special equipment are you going to need to clean up over epoxy? Um, this, it's, I don't know where it came from. It doesn't make sense. And, um, but one of the biggest things, one of the biggest things that really got me riled was Bill McGrath flat out lied to you. If you look at the minutes from the end of November, I was at many of the meetings where you were discussing this, he promised backwards and forwards that he would not come back with a whole new redesign. This that you had tonight was a whole new redesign. He flat out lied to you. And if I were you, I would be outraged. If in most public, if you were in a private sector, he would be fired for insubordination, flat out. Because he, and you could go back, look at the minutes, look at the recordings. He told you it would not be something new, and he came back with something new. I would be very upset, especially, I am upset. I would think you would be very upset. So um, I hope you do something about that. That's, that's unacceptable. And finally, I have, a, there's a Mr. John Lotito that is, as he knows Jeff Schilke, and he knows Alan Wolf, who's not here tonight. He, he wanted to come tonight, but he couldn't. So he asked me to pass this on. He had some questions. He said, the question is this. If the object of this downtown beautification is to draw new business into the downtown area to reap sales tax revenue, and in the current state of the economy there should be no other, why are they planning on doing it to a street that has no room for new buildings and have no current businesses that front Houston Street? It would be much better served if they have to spend our money to improve the looks of Island Avenue between Wilson and City Hall. Or, here's a thought, use the money to lower electric bills until they figure out how to get out of that deal. Thank you. Yeah. Just, just one remark about the costs. This, this new plan that came about after the election actually cost more money than the prior plan. So I just wanted to set that clear. Anybody else in the audience wish to address us this evening? Okay, uh, item number seven is uh, Main Street. Hurt or Joy or somebody? Hurt? All right, good evening, everyone. Um, one of the best things about uh, being president of the board of directors for Main Street is once a year I get to come up here and brag about the things that we did really well over 2014 and get everyone here excited about what we've got uh, coming up for 2015. Um, so as I run through this, one of the things that we always like to touch on is start out um, and give everyone an overview as to where it was that Batavia Main Street came from. Um, it was initially started in 1998 uh, as part of a re redevelopment strategy based on a city survey that said that really the most important thing to the citizens of Batavia was a, um, a revitalization of the downtown. So as, uh, as we work through as a board of directors and a staff and we look at to what action plans we're going to implement through Batavia Main Street for the coming year, um, we sit down and we game plan, have a very large meeting where we put everything up on a board and go through. And all of our decisions are made based on two things, really. What does it meet our mission and does it meet our vision? Um, I, mean, I always like to read out our, our mission statement that Batavia Main Street program is a not-for-profit, community-based organization devoted to enhancing Batavia, downtown Batavia's identity as the heart of the community through dedicated volunteer efforts. And then our vision is to help create a unique and vital downtown that enriches the business community, embraces history, celebrates the arts, preserves our natural environment, and promotes quality events to instill a sense of place in our community. 
So as we go through and plan for 2015 and we look back on what was successes of 2014, uh, we look and say, did each event that we do, did each program that we put together, did each of those things meet our mission and vision to help create uh, this revitalized downtown? And does anything that we're doing going forward, is it going to help enhance what we've already started and what can uh, make this downtown even better? Um, our budget for 2015, so where does all of our funding come from? Um, it's, at this point now, we have uh, $40,000 in city contributions. Um, the SSA uh, is an additional $40,000 in contributions. Um, our programs currently account for a little, over, little under $45,000 in our funding, and our fundraising and special events of $27,000. Um, so it's close to breaking down as far as half and half as to what comes from contributions from the city, our wonderful property owners, and uh, the events and promotions that we do through downtown. I won't bore you by reading every single person on our board of directors right now, um, but I would always like to highlight our amazing staff. I think everybody um, sees Joy uh, always around downtown, um, and uh, Sue as well at every single one of our events. They really are who helps make this uh, Batavia Main Street tick, and they are uh, two of the hardest working people that I've ever um, had the privilege of being involved with. So. so when we look at how do we work overall, um, it, really does, it really is a collaboration of partnerships coming from the national and state level. Um, and you know, what I think more importantly is the local partnerships that we have here between our um, different uh, organizations and groups between the Batavia Chamber of Commerce, the Park Tricks, the Library, BATV. Um, I can go on and on and list all the different organizations that um, have been involved with our different events and committees uh, over the last year. Uh, obviously the city of Batavia has always been a wonderful partner to us. Our property owners who not only provide us um, with funding through the SSA, but um, also are always willing to get involved as far as either stepping up at committees or being on our board itself. Um, overall, the local business community um, would feel we have really continued to grow our partnerships with each individual business in downtown Batavia. And really the biggest thing when it comes down to it is our volunteers that donate um, their time uh, to come to committee meetings, to sit at events, um, to do whatever it takes to make uh, downtown Batavia uh, successful. The National Main Street approach is called the four-point approach um, that is a proven strategy for revitalization, focuses on really leveraging those local assets I just talked about, all our organizations that we have. Um, and it, uh, it's devised to really address a variety of issues and problems that challenge all of our uh, districts here. So it breaks us down into four committees. Uh, the design committee, which is tasked with the downtown beautification, um, looking at facade improvements, uh, renovations, uh, the promotion, which uh, works on promoting businesses and creating the special events. Um, our organization committee uh, is uh, big into recruiting our volunteers and working on our fundraising efforts. And the economic restructuring committee, which works uh, hand in hand with the city and economic development. Um, and then our main goal there is to not only recruit new businesses downtown, but to help retain and grow the businesses that already exist here. So stepping back to 2014, we had 25 individual action, action plans that were created by these committees. We've added an additional two uh, to our, for 2015. Um, so in 2014, with 40 events that came out of those action plans, we're actually, um, kind of stepping up our game here and moving that up to 68 uh, individual events that will happen in downtown Batavia from those 27 action plans that we have this year. So uh, we're very excited to continue to grow uh, in that realm. Um, we estimate based on our last, uh, over 2014, our attendance that these 68 events should bring more than 60,000 people to our wonderful downtown to help uh, show off what it is that we have here, promote our businesses and help everyone grow. A couple things to highlight from 2014 that were brand new that um, really took off. Uh, you know, sometimes some things just uh, show up on our radar and we implement them and they really surprise us with how, they take, how well they take off. One of them was the uh, downtown dance that has brought uh, traditional jazz and swing dance to um, Batavia. 
Um, we have had acts coming in and perform from St. Louis and Nashville and many other places, averaging well over 100 attendees at these dances uh, every time they show up. This is something that has just absolutely astounded us with how quickly it took off, and we've actually had to grow and look for new places to have it because we're outgrowing the spaces that we have. Um, the holiday market uh, was another one that uh, was put together towards the end of last year. Um, which we ended up having 20 vendors and over 600 people attend. As far as uh, from an economic impact, um, there were 11 new businesses, as much as we'd like to. You know, obviously, we can't claim all the responsibility for all this, but um, it's a joint effort with everybody else in the city here. But 11 new businesses opened. Uh, three businesses, we always say, retain or expanded, which means there were businesses that were looking to grow and they chose to stay in Batavia to grow their business here as opposed to going elsewhere. Uh, 32,000 square feet of space was taken off the market and from our surveys of those businesses open, there were 236 new jobs created just in downtown Batavia in 2014. So those are all figures that we're pretty proud of um, that I think the whole city can get behind to show that we're bringing more people down here and showing off what we have. So um, based on the success of our farmers market which has just continued to grow and expand and bringing you know, thousands of people every single week to to downtown we've added a winter farmers market now um, that is um, our uh, wonderful new um, restaurant Gaetano's is hosting in his in his restaurant every Saturday um, the first one was a huge success uh, and we're continuing to look at growing that um, Anything we have something that's been as successful as our farmer's market, we can keep it going, keep that momentum. We're always happy to do that. Um, something that we was somewhat started in 2014 but is now being expanded in 2015 is the egg hop. Um, I think uh, one of the things I'm supposed to say here is it's not a hunt, it's a hop. Uh, <laughs> but uh, where uh, it involves all the downtown businesses, uh, families can get together collect their Easter eggs, go around to the businesses, get candy, uh, prizes, all sorts of different things. So, uh, One of our larger projects that we're working on and getting closer and closer to finalizing is Project Mosaic, um, which is a hybrid co-working space um, that has been a project we've been working on for the last couple of years. Um, one of the big uh, developments that came with that in 2014 was re we received a grant of just over $53,000 from the King County Riverboat grant to uh, help fund this project. So that is continuing to move forward um, and we're working on finalizing all the plans for that now. So, you know, who makes us tick? Um, you know, the community, this is our community here. Um, a very dedicated group of volunteers. I um, like to refer to this as our army of volunteers um, because any event that you come to, um, it doesn't, none of the people there that are working it are getting paid to do it. Every single person there is there donating their time and uh, I have never been involved with an organization that gets volunteers that are as passionate as uh, they work for Main Street with all of our various committees and all the action plans. Um, you know, just to sum that up, last year we had over 1,700 volunteers that donated over 2,800 hours of their time, completely free of charge, to um, bring people downtown and show off what it is that Batavia really is. A um, little bit of bragging that we get to do. Um, every year uh, we attend the Illinois Main Street uh, Conference in which there are uh, four awards given out um, based on each of the four committees. Um, so roughly a little over 50 Main Street communities in the state of Illinois, last time I looked, in 2012, 2013, and we're looking at 2014 now, uh, we have taken three out of the four awards um, from at the Illinois uh, Main Street Conference. So that's something that we're really proud of and um, hoping we can, again, continue to duplicate that in 2015. So. Um, I already talked a little bit about Joy, but uh, one of the things that's great about having her um, as our executive director is she's starting to get very, very recognized here. She's been asked to come and speak at the National Main Street Conference as well as the Illinois um, Main Street Historic Preservation Conference. Um, now, this is not something that every single executive director uh, gets invited to do, so uh, something we can say we're really proud to have Joy uh, working with us, getting invited to go and represent Batavia and talk about what it is we're doing here so that other Main Street communities throughout the country can uh, basically look to copy us is what we look at. So. 
Okay. Um, I've seen any questions. Um, you can contact uh, Batavia Main Street at 630-761-3528 or obviously at info at downtown Batavia. Um, thank you very much and said so we always uh, always look forward to giving this presentation to you guys every year. So. Any questions of Mr. Hagerman tonight? Well, on behalf of the City Council, I just want to publicly thank Batavia Main Street for an outstanding job of representing and promoting and expanding downtown Batavia into greater and grander ideas and concepts. And it, certainly I think it does all of us a lot of good to see all these people wander in here. Uh, I have the opportunity to travel a lot throughout the region with other mayors and that, and I get a lot of questions about the good things that are happening in downtown Batavia. So I think that we have some opportunities in the next few years to do some stuff that may further expand it. There's Certain properties, I think, will fall into place to be available for redevelopment. And the momentum that you've helped to create here, I think, is going to be part of the market that really drives that into practice and, and takes place. And that we will really, I think, see some greater and grander things even happen in Batavia in this downtown in the days ahead, thanks to the good efforts of Batavia Main Street. So thank you, Kurt, and all those who work with you, because uh, you really are doing a job that is making Batavia shine. Thank you very much. We appreciate that. And we're very excited to work with everyone here. And you continue to do that. Thank you. OK, and some more positive news. I'd like to ask the police chief if he would be so kind as to come forward and introduce to us our new probationary police officer, who I'm going to have the honor of swearing in in just a minute. Thank you, Mayor. I'd be more than proud to do so. Uh, I'd like to introduce our newest police officer uh, to the city council, uh, Jamie Lingoshi. If you'll stand up next to me, Jamie. And just uh, mention a little bit about her. Uh, Jamie has an Associate of Arts from College of DuPage, a uh, Bachelor of Science in Psychology from Illinois State University. Uh, she served as a community service officer on the Naperville Police Department and also worked for the Naperville Park District Police as a, as a part-time park service officer. She was hired by us as a full-time police officer on September 22nd. She's already graduated from the Suburban Law Enforcement Academy at College of DuPage on December 19th and uh, is now going through her field training with various field training officers uh, currently. And we're very, very happy to have Jamie join our department and wish her the very best and a very bright future. Thank you. OK, Jamie, I'm going to have you come up here in the center because I'm going to get you on TV. <laughs> uh, and so if you stand there so we get you on TV. First of all, I'd like to officially welcome you to the Batavia Police Department. And as I said in the opening invocation, we wish you many years of safe and, and exciting uh, times with us, and we thank you for your willingness to step forward. On a more personal note, I got to tell you, as I think you and I talked once before, I've been the mayor here a long time, and I've got to know your mayor in Naperville quite well, Mayor Pradle. And Mayor Pradle and I have kind of this joke going back and forth that for years, there's been all these Batavia residents who have gotten hired in the, in the Naperville Police and Fire Departments. I think more in the Fire Department than in the police, but we've got Batavia residents over working in Naperville. And so now I've got one to throw back at George the next time I see him. And so I really appreciate that opportunity. So if you would raise your right hand and repeat after me. I and state your name. Having been, appointed Having been appointed to the position of proba probationary police officer on September 22, 2014, in the city of Batavia, in the counties of Kane and DuPage, do solemnly swear and affirm that I will support the Constitution of the United States in the Constitution of the State of Illinois, and I will faithfully discharge the duties of probationary police officer to the best of my ability. Congratulations. Welcome you, aboard. Hello, everyone. Um, I have here with me today my dad, Jim, 
my mom, Laura, and my sister, Katie. And I have one more sister, Ashley, but she was too upset about the Packers' loss to be here today. <laughs> She's living in Madison. And I would just like to thank everyone involved for this opportunity. When I was sitting in the orientation at the beginning of the testing process with over 300 applicants, I never thought I'd be standing here. So thank you. Thank you. Okay, now I'm going to turn the mic over to Chief Dyke because we're going to do the same thing in the fire department. Good evening. Tonight it's my pleasure to introduce uh, several new members of our department. The first one is going to be Crystal Floor, and he is going to be a new full-time uh, firefighter on the Batavia Fire Department. Chris, could you come forward? Chris LaFleur has been a member of the Batavia Fire Department as a paid on call for seven years. Uh, since being on the department, he has completed certifications in firefighting. Uh, he's got his paramedic license, and he completed his associate's degree in fire science. Chris has been working as a contract medic here in Batavia for the last two years. He took our full-time test and ended up number one on the list. Um, he is a local. He was born and raised here in Batavia. He went to Batavia High School. Chris, Chris volunteers on the uh, uh, Valley Sheltered Workshop. He also volunteers with the American Cancer Society. Um, he will be replacing a firefighter that chose to go to another department. So we have an opening in our department. We are excited to be getting Chris as a full-time person on our, in our, on our department, and we are confident that he will continue to be an asset with our department. So congratulations, Chris. Okay, sure. We've got to get Chris up here so we can do the get you on TV again. First of all, I just want to say that, uh, as most of you know, I hang around the fire department, or at least I go to fires, and I've seen Chris, I think since you were in high school, you've been with us in some form or fashion, uh, maybe as a fan to begin with or an interested one, and I can remember you early on wanting to help straighten out holes and watch the hydrant and all the things that you do, so you're one of those that I don't think you'll ever get it out of your blood, so you might as well. I'm glad we got you full time, because I'm sure we're going to get a lot of good work out of you, and again, we wish you a very safe career in your days here. If you would uh, raise your right hand and repeat after me, I and state your name, having been appointed to the position of probationary full-time firefighter paramedic, with the Batavia Fire Department, in the city of Batavia, in the counties of Kane and DuPage, do solemnly swear and affirm, swear and affirm that, I will the Constitution the that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Illinois, State of Illinois and I will faithfully discharge the duties, discharge the duties of the position of probationary full-time firefighter paramedic, probationary full -time full -time firefighter paramedic with the Batavia Fire Department, Batavia Fire Department to the best of my ability. Of my Congratulations. <laughs> I understand his parents are going to come up and, no. or your fiance, yes. <laughs> you're going to, you're going to pitch his badge on him? Oh, you got the badge, okay. <laughs> Very good. Well, you want to say anything? Um, I don't know if I could top the first speech, but uh, everybody here, uh, I, couldn't, I couldn't be here without everybody in this room, so thank you very much. Okay, now we're going to be um, swearing in three new paid on call fire uh, firemen. Uh, there would be Josh Panastro, Andrew Kasoulis, and Nicholas Sanders Mudd. So, if all three of you could come up front here, please. <laughs> All right, Josh, raise your hand, Josh, so everybody knows who you are. 
Josh is a, a local. He uh, lives in Batavia. He has a, a strong background in firefighting through his family. His family is uh, has firefighters on Bloomington. They were on some of them were on Batavia, and some of them are on uh, West Chicago Fire Department. Uh, the department sponsored him to attend basic fire operations class over at College of DuPage where he got his basic operations firefighter certificate and he is now attending EMT class over at College of DuPage, no, over at Elgin Community College. Andrew, raise your hand. Andrew lives in Batavia also. Um, the department sponsored him to attend the basic uh, class over at the College of DuPage. He has a certificate in firefighting and is also attending an EMT class over at the Elgin Community College. Nicholas? Nicholas is a certified uh, basic operations firefighter. He's a certified EMT and he served in the United States Army. So congratulations, gentlemen. Go on up front. show on TV together here. Well, first of all, I want to thank each one of you for stepping forward. This is, uh, you know, the paid on call is a long time tradition in the Batavia Fire Department. And you're looking at one of the proud retired members of that organization. I, I did, this is what you get after you've been a Batavia paid on call fireman, you can become the mayor. <laughs> and so uh, I uh, really have the utmost appreciation for what you're all about. And I wish you again, many years of safety and development in your firefighting career. So if you would all raise your right hands and repeat after me, I and state your names. Having been appointed to the position of paid on call firefighter recruit with the Batavia Fire Department in the city of Batavia in the counties of Kane and DuPage you solemnly swear and affirm that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Illinois and I will faithfully discharge the duties of the position of paid on call recruit with the Batavia Fire Department to the best of my abilities. Congratulations. After we got that done, uh, the next thing is the administrator's report. Mr. McGrath. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, briefly, um, the, our formal uh, Christmas tree collection is now over in terms of our contractual uh, uh, refuse uh, people being involved and picking it up for free. From this uh, point on, if you want to have your uh, Christmas tree removed, it requires a sticker and it needs to be put out on your normal collection day. Uh, you need to remember to take off any ornaments or uh, wires, lighting, or anything like that. Uh, more importantly, I wanted to let you, you know in the community that we received notice today that uh, Party Light Facility, which is uh, in our industrial park, also is our second largest uh, electric user. Uh, we were notified that they have been uh, chosen to be the Global Excellence Center for the company. Uh, they were vying uh, for this uh, um, for the status with uh, another facility in the company in Europe, which unfortunately <laughs> will be closed, but um, it's our gain, and uh, they estimate that the business at the uh, company should increase by approximately 25% um, over the next few years. So that's very good news for us in economic development. Uh, they employ a lot of people, and as I said, they're our second largest electric user. So that's all I have this evening. Very good. Any questions of Mr. McGrath this evening? Thank you. Okay, moving to item number 12, the committee reports. Uh, community development, Alderman Brown. Thank you, Your Honor. A few meetings to announce. The plan commission scheduled for tomorrow evening, Wednesday, January 21st, has been canceled. The historic preservation meeting scheduled for January 26th at 530 is still scheduled. Nothing on their agenda at this point that I know of. And then the next committee of a whole meeting scheduled for January 27th is at 730. We've got a half dozen or so items for CDC on there, land cash amendment, 
the Rudy Property Exchange, uh, IGA with King County and Kirk Access, Kirk Road Property par Proceeds, that's from the uh, parcel on the northeast corner of Kirk and Wilson Street that we sold, recently sold. Uh, tentatively, there's some discussion on the Baptist Church property, and then a continuation of tonight's 6.30 meeting on further discussion on Houston Street. That's all I have as far as meetings, Your Honor. I did want to, under my report, um, make, uh, make it known that the last report we got for the year end for the building activity, um, I wanted to make it known that last year in the city of Batavia, there was 32,449,583 private dollars spent through new construction projects, whether it be homes or additions or commercial or what have you. Um, that is up from last year. Last year there was $23,274,136. So that's quite a jump in one year of, of uh, construction dollars spent in the city of Batavia. Along with that, what came the permit fees that the city charges for all the review of all the permits and the inspections that go along with all that. And that amount came up to $1,049,113 for fees that were collected to perform all the functions that the city has to perform. Uh, recently, the Community Development Department put together a, a uh, report that they're going to continue to do. And we all had a copy of that. It's all on, I think it was on the website. And there's projects that are listed in there um, that they're continually working on, projects that have been done. And just in summary, I wanted to read off a few of the items on here. Um, in 2014, there were 537 code enforcement inspections, 52 adjudication cases, four circuit court cases, and then a whole list of other uh, miscellaneous items that the community development has been working on with Rhonda and as the code compliance officer. So I thought this was a very good report. I know we talked about it at the committee level, and um, certainly I thought Scott and his department have been doing a great job and everything they've been doing, they've got their, their plate full. Um, engineering department started putting together a report that they we hope to see that continue with. Um, we all know that there's been a change in the engineering department, but um, uh, Public Works is going to continue on with that report, so we'll be able to kind of keep in touch with everything that is, is happening, because as time goes by, you kind of forget about the projects that are being worked on, so it's always good to be able to refresh our memory on things that are continually being worked on by our staff. That's all I have. Any questions of Alderman Brown and Community Development? Okay, Public Utilities, Alderman Clark, please. There is an item on the January 27th Committee of the Whole meeting um, regarding fiber utility. There's going to be a presentation. And then and there's also a closed session on the agenda for purchase and sale of electric power, which is always on there, and the acquisition of real properties. That's all I see so far for uh, public utilities. Thank you. Uh, governmental Services, Alderman Stark. On January 27th, uh, during the cow, we have budget amendments. And then on February 3rd, we have uh, Houston Street and prevailing wage ordinances. And that's all I've got. A question for sure. government services. A question or a image problem was presented to uh, myself about uh, some of the transparency issues regarding uh, reporting and when we're receiving reports. Um, so I'd like to maybe take a proactive approach and do what possibly other uh, municipalities do and either have a policy or an ordinance uh, stating when uh, reports should be due to arrive on the next agenda and your thoughts as to when that, if we could have that discussion. So you'd like to say if we have a cow meeting and there's an item that requires action that we have the backup material for it x amount of days prior x amount of days before i believe because part of being transparent is having an engaged and informed public and i want to make sure that we have that out to people so that they can inform us of their opinions and thoughts that's i thought we had some goals on that already um but I, and I was thinking, a, in light of I, in light of a lot of the concerns that were raised to me about it, they just wish that there would be some stated guidelines as to that that we 
take a more proactive approach and move that forward. What, what types of reports, like the clickable things that are on our agendas or? Yes. yes. What would be on the agenda on by Friday night that I know some staff members do a phenomenal job in getting us reports two weeks in advance. Um, and this doesn't bar those occasions where we would have um, emergency uh, type information that would need to go on the report. We could state when that would be. You're going for like a best practice then? Best practice. Okay. Is it something that you're looking for to add to our code or, or? However we feel, I don't want to drive the conversation. I think we should have the conversation and would like everybody's input on that. Okay. Should we add that to the agenda for government services uh, for? Full meeting on the 27th. We, yeah, the 27th, we have a lot of stuff going 27th's on. really Could fun. we put it on February 3rd? That's fine by me. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Not a problem. Thank you. Any questions of Alderman Stark? Uh, in the absence of Alderman Wolf, does anybody have a city services report? I'll skip it right here. It's uh, on the 27th of January, the fire and police surplus vehicles, master service agreement with Benison Associates, and public works vehicle purchases. Uh, moving then to 13 other business, does any member of the council have other business they wish to discuss? Uh, anything further from the audience? Okay, moving to the mayor's report. As it's already been publicized, I'd like, I'd like to read this though so we get it on the record. As all of you know, I was visited on uh, January 8th by Alderman Vasily and he called and asked if he could come over and he came over and at that time indicated to me that he was going to be resigning immediately because of conflicts with his business, his architectural business, and his service on the city of Batavia. The next day on January 9th, he submitted to me, and I believe all of you have seen a copy of this, the following letter, which I'd like to read into the record. Uh, and I'll give it to the clerk so you don't have to. Uh, Dear Mayor Schelke, uh, Batavia City Council, city staff, and citizens of Batavia. It is with great sadness that I am announcing my resignation from the Batavia City Council effective immediately. After six years of national and local recession, our economy is finally recovering and business activity is accelerating. This has allowed me to reopen my local architectural practice. And then he's got an asterisk here that wants me to read. It says, my practice was open from 1990 to 2013. In the summer of 2013, I accepted full-time employment at a local architectural firm, but had no ownership interest. This allowed me to run for and serve as an alderman without violating the state's con conflict of interest statutes. These changing circumstances, however, create a conflict for, with my ability to serve as a local elected official. I cannot legally represent my clients before the city on matters such as negotiating zoning issues or obtaining building permits while also serving the city as an alderman. I thank all of you who supported my campaign and election in 2013. Your support and advice has helped me serve more effectively. It has been an honor to represent the fifth ward. I have loved having a voice in city government. It has been a privilege to work beside the mayor, fellow council members, the city staff, and all whom are dedicated, all of whom are dedicated to creating a better Batavia. And uh, sincerely, Steve Vasilian, Alderman, Fifth Ward, City of Batavia. So I think just for the formalities of it, I would ask that we pass the motion of acceptance of the letter of resignation. I move we um, accept his resignation letter. Second. Move and second. Uh, I would add that I would certainly accept this with great regret because I think Steve was a, a, a interesting voice. He had a lot of great thoughts. He had some real vision and we are going to miss him. And I certainly wish him the very best in the days ahead because uh, I think he has a lot to offer and hopefully he stays around Batavia and showers his architectural talents in our community and in our downtown and that we all become beneficial from his efforts while he can't be an alderman that his professional career uh, is a real star on his ship of, uh, of, of business um, and ship that he is here to uh, do the best he can for Batavia and other pursuits in the days ahead. Uh, so that being said, uh, Kirk, uh, call the roll. ATAC? 
Aye. Star? Aye. Transit? Aye. Fisher? Aye. O'Brien? Aye. Callahan? No. Homan? Aye. Sam? Aye. Cerrone? Aye. McFadden? Aye. Brown? Aye. Clark? Aye. All right. Motion is approved. Uh, amendment yes, one no, uh, one vacant, uh, one absent. Uh, I just this afternoon, after I've had a couple of occasions, I've talked with the city attorney on several occasions since Steve uh, served me with the notice that he was going to leave. And I, as Kevin Drendo prepared a memo, I think all of you got a copy of that too. Uh, and based on what Kevin has told me, I issued a memo this afternoon that I'd like to read publicly. Uh, dated January 20th to the City Council for myself, reference Fifth Ward vacancy. <coughs> After discussion with our City Attorney, I am proposing the following schedule for the selection of a new Fifth Ward Alderman to fill the vacancy created by the resignation of Steve Vassilian. As per previous selection processes, I would propose that we invite any qualified Fifth Ward resident to apply for a two-year term of office that will expire in May of 2017. The office then will be filled for a four-year term by a person selected in the general election to be held in April of 2017. We invite qualified applicants to apply by submittal of a letter of interest to, do, to be delivered to the office of the mayor, 200 North Island Avenue in Batavia, no later than 5 p.m. on Tuesday, February 10th, 2015. Copies of the letter Copies of the, in the copies of the letter, we encourage to be included some biographical material about the applicant, which will be distributed to all current members of the City Council for their review. During the regular meeting of the City Council Committee of the Whole to be held on Tuesday, February 17, 2015, in an interview session of all applicants will be held, followed by a selection vote amongst all the current members of the City Council present at this session. The successful applicant will be officially sworn into office at the regular city council meeting on March 2nd, 2015. So that gives you kind of the time frame. Uh, we set it so there's three weeks from today, we're gonna give the fifth ward residents three weeks notice to con cogitate about it. Hopefully some will step forward and submit letters of interest to us. Those letters will all be distributed to you. And then on the uh, meeting on the, on the uh, 17th, uh, we will invite those folks in as we did recently with the first ward for an interview session and then after that we will adjourn to the back room for a few minutes and we will vote just like we did last time and all of you will have a say in the selection of which one or whoever is selected if we only got one i guess we don't need to vote but i mean we will do the the interview and see what what happens so i have had several people contact me and ask some questions about this and i haven't had any letters obviously because we've just announced it tonight, but I told several people that we would be making an announcement tonight as to the criteria of how to go forth. And certainly if anybody calls you, I would encourage you to answer their questions. And certainly if you feel they're a qualified applicant to encourage them to apply. I wanna stress because we've had this confusion previously, to apply for this position, you've got to reside within the boundaries of the fifth ward. And you have to meet all the other legal requirements to, to serve as an election a public official, which aren't that many, uh, but uh, the biggest one is probably the residency in the, in the community. You have to live here, I believe, a year, don't you? Yeah. And uh, so, and be a U.S. citizen, there's a, several other little things. But uh, we would encourage folks to step forward. Uh, if you're not, not sure if you live in the Fifth Ward, you can come down to City Hall and either in the Community Development Department or upstairs at the receptionist desk. We have colored maps that show, delineate each one of the wards by a different color, so it shouldn't be hard for anybody to figure out if they are a resident of the fifth ward. So hopefully from that news, we will go forward with, forward with that. Um, I have a couple other things I'd just like to briefly mention. At the city council meeting on May 2nd, uh, Pace bus is going to come down for a few minutes, and they may bring a bus and park it out here by the front. And you know, we do have a new call and ride bus service in Batavia for residents of the community to use. Uh, the bus is specifically put in play here because uh, with the opening of Challenger lighting and with some activity and interest we had expressed in Fermi Lab, uh, the bus now is put into place and it sits in Geneva every morning and meets the commuter trains coming out from Chicago. We pick people up 
on the PACE bus and take them to several different places in the industrial park, including Challenger and a couple others, and then we take a bunch of folks out to Fermi Lab, and then in the afternoon we return to those same locations, pick those folks up, and take them to various scheduled trains, and they all know the train schedules. That's working out quite well, but between about 9 in the morning, 9.30, and about 3, we've got downtime for this bus. So for a $1.75 one-way ride, we will pick you up at your house, take you to another destination in Batavia if you want to go to Randall Road to shop or come downtown, go to the library, the doctor, whatever. That bus is available to help residents, and we're just trying to spread that word that that is now available for residents to subscribe or pay for a ride, and it's you call up a number and ask for the appointment, and then we show up at your doorstep. I've had nice things said about the bus so far. I've had people call me and say, They've helped them carry groceries into the car or in, from the bus into the house and help people get out of their house and do all kinds of stuff. So as a PACE bus board director for Kane County, I'm pleased to get that positive spin coming out of, out of my town. Uh, the next thing I'd like to announce is, is that you know uh, last year we began the practice and the first one we had kind of out of the park was the Batavia School Board down here. And we asked the school board to come down and have a joint meeting with us to talk about issues that were common to us all. And I think some positive things have come from that. To certainly we are about to you know, begin to enforce and enact an ordinance that's going to increase our school fees for new housing in the community. And I think that r basically rose out of that particular discussion with the school board. But the one I really want to get down here and it, it plays on some of the remarks I heard earlier tonight before I was running the movie, the m movie, the meeting, uh, is I want to get the Batavia Park Board down because as Alderman Brown said, I think we have some real opportunities along the Fox River specifically as it rolls through downtown. Uh, we've already built the river walk. Uh, we need to do some stuff to kind of spruce up and polish up the river walk. Uh, I'm particularly concerned about we've got a bunch of dead trees specifically along the east side of our building here that have died and literally are falling in the river and are laying there and they're very obtrusive and very unsightly. And I think of things like the Main Street uh, uh, opportunity that we have in May when they have the evening in the park out here in the back. Certainly we want that area to look as prominent. So I'd like to get the park district down here for what I'm going to describe as a very friendly conversation and just some open communications. I'm going to have the staff myself try to work on maybe some, some pictures that we can show and just have some conversation with them about the overall value of things that we see that we can work in tandem with them. And then certainly uh, they are going to play a key role in whatever park properties develop at the Moosart property when, in, when that is developed after our annexation agreement. They're going to have a fairly large site out there that they're going to be able to be in a position to kind of control and dictate what's going to happen and we want to have a partnership with them on that. So I think there's a lot of different things we can do. So uh, I will propose, as we did with the school board, that we will probably schedule this at a, at a JCAL meeting sometime in the next couple of months. But you know, on that night, I'd like to have certainly as many of you as possible be here to kind of have the dialogue with them. Because I think these dialogues with the other governments and the, the Batavia Library has also asked me that they want to come down and have a dialogue with you. So we've got two other governmental bodies that are going to be coming in here. but. I really want to get the park district in here in the near term. Uh, and the last thing I'd like to talk to you about is, uh, I'd like to get your feedback, and you don't need to give it to me tonight, but I'd like to have some about, you know, the, the, the whole subject of temporary signs in the downtown. And we've had some problems recently where people have taken it upon themselves to advertise some event, some sale that they're having at their house, uh, whatever they want to do, and they start picking a spot in downtown, and, and one place that's become very popular to pound signs in the ground is in our planters along Wilson Street from Batavia Avenue down to Island. We get a lot of signs now planted in the planters. And, you know, I think we need to talk about that, is, you know, specifically if they start wanting to put political signs in the planters, you know, what that's going to mean. But the one that I've been troubled by, and I've quite honestly used a little bit of my own mayoral discretion with them, we've had some people try to impart signs up at the War Memorial at Batavia Avenue and Wilson Street, and they're up there pounding signs in the ground or hanging them on the poles outside. 
Uh, we had a sign up there this weekend that was there for two days. Uh, it disappeared quickly, though, when it was seen, but it, I was called and commented to me by several residents about that. And I just want to know what your opinions are about these temporary signs that pop up in the downtown and what may be possible solutions we can have to the whole question of signs, because we're getting into the period when the winter gets over, that's when all the yard sales and garage sales and people start wanting to advertise their school fun fair or whatever it is we're going to do. And you know, the intersection out at Randall and Wilson has become a sign haven, as has the front, I'll call it the front corner of Kai Tarum's yard up at Prairie and Wilson, right there by the right where the railroad track cuts across, there's a little triangular piece of property and we get that thing compacted with signs on occasion up there. And I think we need to look at that. It's just not a real sightly thing, and I think we got to have some control over what's going on here, because I'm just fearful that, you know, with people on having heavy political opinions about something or whatever, that we're going to get some stuff that we need to be in a discretion to deal with it. So we don't need to talk about tonight, but I want you to think about what we should be doing with that. Mm -hmm. So that's enough for you. I gave you too much to think about. Uh, we're not going to have an executive session tonight, so Alderman Brown, I'd entertain a motion for adjournment. Move we adjourn. Second. Move by Alderman Brown. Second by Alderman O'Brien. Clerk, take a voice vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.